Cam Rogers with you. Harris is alongside here to break down all of the latest across the NBA. And our segment here, five players who could be traded this offseason, Harris. We'll go name by name here. We'll start with Kawhi. You know what, Cam? People have been shouting me out in the YouTube comments saying that I'm too butthurt over YouTube comments. I'm not. But you people keep getting mad at me because, oh, my trades aren't even. You cannot come up with better trades than I can because the Ruben C trade machine is elite and is also unstoppable. And we're going back to the Kawhi Leonard trade machine because, look, Kawhi Leonard probably is the best possible chance of any player in the NBA to get traded this season. I think with the Spurs and him not getting along, I understand they can offer him the Supermax, but I think Kawhi Leonard is going to end up getting traded. I think they are past the point of no return. Kawhi's camp has made it very clear that he wants to be in a bigger market. He doesn't want to practice as much. He wants to be treated like a superstar and that's not how the Spurs usually handle their players. So again, I had this last week, and I'm bringing it back because I think this is a great trade for both sides. This is my Spurs-Lakers trade. If the Lakers want Kawhi Leonard, they're going to have to pay through the nose for him. So they give up Brandon Ingram, they give up Kyle Kuzma, they give up Josh Hart and their 2019 first, and they get the finals MVP, Kawhi Leonard. I was trying to see if I could throw an expiring contract in there for the Spurs as well, just to you know get a little money off the books for the Lakers, but there wasn't really anything there. And before all you Lakers fans get mad at me, I made this trade consciously knowing that Paul George is most likely going to be a Laker next year. So now look at your team. Lonzo Ball, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Julius Randle, and then you get a center in the draft or in free agency. And maybe, just maybe, LeBron James is added onto that lineup as well. I didn't put him on there because we still have no idea what's going to happen with LeBron. I am pretty, I'm like 90% sure Paul George is going to go to the Lakers despite what all these random sources are saying that he thinks Andre Roberson was the difference between the Thunder and the Finals. Whatever. But I still think Kawhi Leonard is going to get traded this offseason. And with anything, Harris, context matters. Oh, yeah. Of course, you have reasoning behind why Kawhi exactly. is on this list. And the reason that Kawhi Leonard, you know, why he's one of my top players to get traded, I don't think that the Spurs and him are going to be able to make this right. I understand that apparently he told Danny Green that he wants to be on the Spurs. I get it. But there's more things at play here than just what Kawhi Leonard wants. He has a group now. He has a quarterback unquote camp that he has to deal with he is a sponsor you know he's a huge shoe deal with Jordan they're trying to make him the face of their brand and I wonder if the things around him are forcing this rather than Kawhi Leonard being the problem I could totally see this coming from everyone else except Kawhi but I still think that Kawhi is going to get traded I think we're just way way past what the Spurs want to deal with Let's take a look at these 76ers, and they're giving up a lot here according to your trade machine to get Kawhi. Yes. Now, one thing I do want to explain with these trades with the 76ers and the Lakers, these are trades that these two teams would make this offseason. The Spurs could very well just hold on to Kawhi Leonard and see if he'll hold out into the actual NBA season. And at that point, the trade offers are going to start to just get bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, depending on what happens with Kawhi. If he does come back at the trade deadline or before, maybe it – changes its trade value, but for now, I have the 76ers giving up Covington, Fultz, and Saric, plus their first-round pick this year, and Jared Bayless. If you're a 76ers fan and you're wondering, Bo, why is our trade a little more lopsided than the Lakers? It's not. Look, Robert Covington's a good player, but he's not elite by any margin. We have no idea what Markel Fultz is going to be as an mm -hmm. NBA player. Dario Saric is a, is a nice four, but I don't think he's worth crying over. That first-round pick you know, it's number 10 overall, so it doesn't have a ton of value. But before you yell at me, Sixers fans, look at the lineup I've given you. Look at this. Ben Simmons, J.J. Redick, Kawhi Leonard. Maybe you re-sign Ersan Ilyasova or you get any random four off the bench that can rebound. And then you have Joel Embiid. Congratulations. You all of a sudden maybe have the best starting five in the entire Eastern Conference, tied maybe with the Boston Celtics. But... Don't get mad at me, Sixers fans. I just gave you Kawhi Leonard, and all you had to really give up was one starting player and Markel Fultz. Please. I don't want to hear it. All right, so should the Spurs trade Kawhi Leonard? Let us know in comments yes. here on Facebook Live as well as YouTube. Certainly seems to be a lot of rumors swirling around that the era with Kawhi in San Antonio could be coming to a close. I so think we'll it see. is, which is a shame because, you know, he could have, not could have, we obviously don't know if he's going to get traded, but, you know, they really did plan for him being the next stage of this franchise after Tim Duncan, but it just doesn't seem that the culture, you know, worked out for Kawhi Leonard. All right, let's go to name number two on the list, and we've got Carl Anthony Towns, 
So he and the front office apparently are not getting along, reportedly not in a good place. That's why we're talking about him. No, and there's also another rumor that, you know, we got to be consistent. We have to tell both sides of the rumor as well. While him and his relationship with the front office is bad, there is also a report that the Timberwolves would rather side with Carl Anthony Towns than Tom Thibodeau. So really, it could go either way. They could either get rid of Thibodeau and keep Towns, or Mm -hmm. they could get rid of Towns and keep Thibodeau. Really determines what Carl Anthony Towns wants. Does he want to stay in Minnesota, or does he really want to get out of town and go maybe play with you know the Suns or another NBA team with one of his buddies on it or just another title contender? We'll see. But this offseason is going to be really interesting with Carl Anthony Towns because they might just offer him an extension just to keep him happy. But I, I, I don't know. I, I'm really not sure where Towns in the front office for the T-Wolves sits right now. All right, so for KAT here, we'll take a look at the Phoenix Suns as a potential trade, and the trade machine has spat out the following. People, especially Suns fans, by the way, I'm making an enemy out of the Phoenix Suns fans on YouTube. You are. (laughs) I am not sorry because apparently the Phoenix Suns don't want to give up a guy who can't shoot, a complete bust as a first-round pick, and then the number one overall pick, which everyone was mad at me for giving up despite the fact that Carl Anthony Towns was the number one overall pick in the draft and is now an all-star, 22 years old, averaging 23 and 12. So there's no guessing game. No, there's no guessing game. You're going to have to give up the number one overall pick to get Carl Anthony Towns, who was a number one overall pick, who has lived up to the billing of being said pick. Now, again, you might get a little bit mad at me uh, based off just kind of what I have here in terms of their overall lineup. Now, I think, obviously, they're not going to have Josh Jackson, so the small four position in general is going to change. But I think just... Look, they have T.J. Warren there at small forward. I think he's a good enough player on both offense and defense to make it work. I think that he's a good player overall. I think that if you can get Carl Anthony Towns, it's going to be even better. But, look, this is a good lineup. I know that you're getting mad at me because of, of, of uh, me saying Alfred Payton's good. He's good for this team because he's not going to be told to score. He's going to be told to pass the ball, which he can still do very, very well. He has two great outside shooters in Devin Booker and TJ Warren. He has Carl Anthony Towns now who can shoot from just about anywhere around the paint. Can't really shoot threes yet. Maybe we'll get there. And then you have Tyson Chandler who can be a great veteran, you know, great uh, veteran, excuse me, kind of impact on Carl Anthony Towns. I think this would be a great trade for Towns. I think this would be a good trade for the T-Wolves. I think it would be a good trade for the Suns. Look, I understand that you want DeAndre Ayton, but – you don't know what DeAndre Ayton's going to be in the NBA. I mean, he could be a worse player than Carl Anthony Towns. You can just have Carl Anthony Towns and not have to worry about exactly. it. Exactly. Great thinking there, Harris. All right, let's get to the Lakers as a potential trade partner as well. Now, my Lakers trade with the Timberwolves, I was getting called out a little bit because people thought it was a little bit light. I don't think this is light at all. I think that Kyle Kuzma, in terms of his overall kind of thought process inside of NBA front offices, is much higher than a Brandon Ingrams. I'm not saying that Kyle Kuzma is a better player, but I think that NBA front offices look at Kyle Kuzma and they say, okay, we can get a finished product in his early 20s. We know what we're getting Going to average 16 points per game no matter what team he's on. He's a good shooter. He's a stretch four who can shoot threes and also play good defense. They have Josh Hart as well, and they also give up a 2019 first, and they get Carl Anthony Towns. Now, I know that Lakers fans are going to be really happy with that, and uh, T-Wolves fans might be a little mad, but look, if you're the T-Wolves, you don't have to pay Carl Anthony Towns the crazy amount of money that he's going to end up getting. He probably will end up being eligible for the Supermax over the next couple of seasons, so now you don't have to pay him that. You get a first-round pick. You get a great player in Kyle Kuzma, same age, a little bit less on the points per game, but I'd argue a much better defender. And then you also get a good backup point guard in Josh Hart, who can play either the one or the two, can play good defense, and his offensive output is only going to improve as he plays more NBA games. I think it's a fine trade for the T-Wolves, and it's a good trade for the Lakers. This is what they've been waiting for. They've been waiting for a player like Carl Anthony Towns to be on the trade block. And look, Lonzo Ball, Paul George, Brandon Ingram, Julius Randle, like Carl Anthony Towns. That's a good lineup. Maybe good for one of the bottom three seeds in the West. Maybe you add LeBron James, and all of a sudden you're one of the top three seeds. Who knows? All right, let's go to the next name on the list for people who could be traded this offseason. And we're talking about C.J. McCollum. And the main uh, thinking behind him, Harris, Blazers, playoff failures of late, leading people to believe that the team may just blow it up. Might be time to blow it up. And I'm serious. Look, I like C.J. McCollum. I think he's one of the best two guards in all of basketball. But just it is very clear that this combination of him and Damian Lillard hasn't worked. Mm-hmm. Look, they were great. They were the three seed in the West coming into the season. And then they got whipped by the Pelicans. Not beat. They got 
whipped. Drew Holiday and Rajon Rondo turned Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum into a bunch of G League players. It was not pretty what the what happened to the Blazers this off or this postseason. And I think overall, if you're going to trade one of Damian Lillard or CJ McCollum to blow up the group, you're not trading Damian Lillard. No. You're not trading. It, it's not happening. You're not trading Damian Lillard. He was first team All-NBA this season. He's going to be an, an MVP candidate for most of the rest of his prime. You're not going to move on. He is the franchise. So my first trade I have for the Portland Trailblazers. Now, again, Blazer fans, I am doing you a favor here. Now, you might be wondering, Harris, why are you only giving us back Frankie Smokes and the number nine overall pick. <laughs> well, Trailblazers fans, it's because you have the worst cap situation of any team in the NBA. You're still paying Evan Turner 20 plus million dollars a year. You're still paying Myers Leonard the worst contract in the entire NBA. You're paying all of these dudes money that they just do not deserve at all. So guess what? I'm sending away CJ McCollum. I'm giving you a cheap player and Frank Nilakina, and I'm also giving you the number nine overall pick in the draft if you want to replace him with another really good score. Frankie Smokes can start at the two, be a good one-two combo with Damian Lillard with his defensive abilities, and then you can draft someone at number nine that can make up for McCollum's scoring. And for the Knicks, it's a great trade. You all of a sudden get a top five shooting guard in the NBA. You don't have to give up too much. You give up you know, a young player and a top pick. And now all of a sudden you have a great starting five. Trey Burke, McCollum, Hardaway, Perzingis, and Cantor. That's an offensive powerhouse. That team's top 10, top 5 in scoring easily. All right, how about the Lakers here? Or excuse me, the Clippers. Now, this is an interesting one. I wanted to get the Clippers into one of our into one of my trade machines this offseason. Also, because people keep asking me to make up trades for the Clippers for whatever reason. But for C.J. McCollum, this would be an even trade for the Trailblazers. So they would only give up C.J. McCollum. They would take in DeAndre Jordan considering he picks up his player option for this year. They also get Patrick Beverly back, and they get one of the Clippers' first-round picks. Now, this is a good trade for the Blazers. It gives them a big man down low that isn't Yusuf Nurkic, who they can use with DeAndre Jordan. Maybe they flip Jordan for another piece. And they also get Patrick Beverly, who, again, similar to Frankie Smokes, would give the Blazers Damian Lillard and a great defensive guard to kind of combo with Damian Lillard's lack of defensive really anything. He's a terrible defender. And for the Clippers, again, similar to the Knicks, you get a top five shooting guard in the NBA. You get someone who can kind of build your offense around. Maybe you draft Robert Williams at the 12th overall pick to replace DeAndre Jordan. So they got a lot of options there with CJ McCollum, but I like this a lot. All right, let's go to Kemba Walker, whom the Hornets Try to trade at the deadline. Do they do it again? Yeah, and they insulted Kemba Walker by trading, you know, by kind of sending him around and saying, ooh, we're looking for a Kemba Walker trade, despite the fact that this season he ended up be, ended up becoming the top scorer in the history of the Hornets franchise. So I think it's very disrespectful what they've done to Kemba Walker. I think it's mean for Michael Jordan to treat him this way, and I think he deserves much, much better. It is time for the Hornets to cash in on Kemba Walker. They are not winning anything next year. They are not winning anything the year after. Their cap situation is abysmal, and you can make an argument that Michael Jordan has been one of the worst NBA owners in terms of player personnel, maybe in the NBA over the past five years. So this is one of the first trades we got. I'm sending Kevin Walker to the Cavs because this almost happened at the deadline. I'm giving the Charlotte Hornets Jordan Clarkson, good young NBA mm -hmm. point guard, J.R. Smith, good expiring contract that can also just, you know, maybe help out Malik Monk a little bit in terms of his NBA progression. And they get the number eight overall pick to maybe replace Kemba Walker with, you know, a Colin Sexton or maybe Trey Young if he's on the board. And the Cavs all of a sudden, they get a great starting point guard. They, you know, they bring in someone who's kind of Kyrie Irving light in a lot of ways. Kemba Walker is kind of an older version of Kyrie Irving and not as a elite of a score, but still a great overall NBA player. I think Kemba Walker would be a great fit on this Cavs team, especially with LeBron James there. All right, then we have the New York Knicks as a potential trade partner as well. Yeah, this this one's fun. Send Kemba Walker back to New York. He's obviously from New York originally, born and raised uh, in New York. So I can't wait to see what we get with Kemba Walker in terms of changing overall teams. But for the Hornets, they get an expiring contract in Noah and in Courtney Lee, plus the number nine overall pick. And then they get a Knicks 2020 first uh, round pick as well. Top five protected. The Knicks get Kemba Walker and Nicholas Batum's horrendous contract, which I don't know why the Hornets gave it to him, but now the Knicks get stuck with them. If you're wondering why center for this lineup is empty, it's because Cantor probably wouldn't be able to get brought back just based off the cap bringing in Kemba Walker and Batum. 
All right, then finally we have Dennis Schroeder of the Hawks who requested a trade to the Pacers or Bucks here, so we'll talk about those teams. I love it when average players on bad teams request trades because that <laughs> means I get to really show people what they're worth around the NBA. So apparently the two teams he wants to go to are the Bucks and the Pacers. Okay, Dennis Schroeder, I'm going to show you what you're worth around the NBA. Dennis Schroeder, you are worth John Henson and DJ Wilson. Wow. That's it. Like, Dennis Schroeder, look, his points per game has increased like every year in the NBA, but to be totally honest, he's not a very efficient player. He's not a great three-point shooter. He's not a great passer, not a great defender. All he really brings to the table is that he's a good finisher and he's you know, a decent playmaker. But look, if he wants to go to the Bucs, they can start him next to Eric Bledsoe, who is kind of the best possible version of Dennis Schroeder. But look, if the Bucs want to make a move for him, they're not going to have to give up much. They'll give up John Henson, which we know that they've been looking to do the past couple of years because they want to start Thon Maker, who they drafted pretty high in the first round. So this would be a good starting five for the Bucs. It adds a little more offense and takes a little bit of the stress off Giannis. But overall, Dennis Schroeder, you're just not worth that much, my man. I'm sorry. All right, then you got the Pacers as well, Harris. Again, look, the Hawks would get back Darren Collison and TJ Leaf. TJ Leaf was a first-round pick last year. Darren Collison's a starting-level point guard in the NBA. Maybe you throw in a, an uber-protected pick in there, maybe a couple seconds. But, look, Dennis Schroeder is not highly regarded around the NBA in terms of his trade value. And I understand that he thinks he's the bee's knees, but unfortunately, Dennis, you are not. You really aren't. You're just okay. You're not one of the better you're not a top 10 point guard in the NBA so the return for him really isn't going to be that impressive and the Pacers in terms of him at the top I, I still don't like it I think they need a distributor all right so five players who could be traded this offseason Kawhi Carl Anthony Towns CJ McCollum Kemba Walker and Dennis come at Roder. me in the comments all right folks this has been NBA Weekly that's Harris Rubenstein I'm Cam Rogers we'll see you next time